Here. Any conflict to report item four, approval of minutes of the meeting of July 10th, 17th, 24th, 31st, August 7th, 
I have it. Number six. Item J, specific finding of fact and decision on property located at 1340 Lakeview Avenue. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item K. Findings on property located at 58470. Approve the fact of finding place. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Order to rescind order to demolish property located at 6735 Carolina Avenue. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Notice of violation hearing on property located at 108 Limbach Street. Yes, they were noticed. Um, this is quite a story here. This is one parcel with 11 units on it. It's a single family home, a garage apartment building, and an office building. Um, we're asking for the removal of two apartments in the single family home. If you look at the pictures, it'll tell the story a little bit better. We're asking for the removal of one apartment in the office building, which is connected to the home. And we're asking for the removal of three garage apartments in the rear dwelling. This is all being taxed as a single family home. Uh, no permits to convert uh, the single family home or the office building into is living units. Homestead exemption too? No, I don't believe so. Uh, 2000, there was a demo. That was, I think, another parcel that they own Sorry. by the school. Yeah. Um, just approving the notice of violation? Yeah, we're, we're asking for the uh, affirmation of the removal of those units, six total. Do you know who the property owner is and everything? Yes. They were noticed properly. And they were noticed properly? Absolutely. Six units total. And have you have you had any contact with them at all? Not since the inspection, no. And who was that? That was in uh, April or March. I'm sorry. And nothing since then. No. Did it occupy any of them? Yeah, she registered the five units that we're allowing them to keep for 2014. Those are occupied. The other ones were marked uninhabitable. March. Okay. You want to take a tour, you're more than welcome. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item N. Notice of violation hearing at property located at 7437 Van Buren Avenue. We're asking here for the removal of the basement bedrooms. There's no ceiling height, six foot three throughout, no fire separation, no permits. The owner is willing to comply. He is living there. So he, he was noticed. He is going to comply and remove those rooms. The last, at the inspection, that's what he expressed. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. 
you. Carrying on property located at 734 169th Street. At this property, we're asking for the removal of the basement apartment in the front dwelling. No permits to convert it uh, into living space. And uh, ceiling height does not meet code throughout most of the basement apartment, as well as egress windows. Some of them are glass block. And, uh, some of them measure 56 inches from the floor to the window sill, where 44 is the maximum allowed. Uh, in the basement, Anywhere from six two to seven feet, it varies a lot. No fire separation as well. I'm attorney Mark Animal, and may I ask uh, the inspector any questions? Sure. Uh, did you determine when this basement apartment was in fact uh, installed or constructed? No, because there's no permits to ever create. Okay. And in your conversations with uh, the owner of the property, did you determine that in fact? This basement apartment was done in 1967. I don't recall anything about 1967. Okay. Uh, and when did my client buy the property? Uh, I do not know. And do you know whether or not my client, when she bought the property, the basement apartment was already there? I assume she bought it as is. And we're definitely not accusing her of adding that space. Okay. So, in other words, it, it wasn't my client, uh, the property owner, that in fact had constructed this basement apartment without pulling any permits, et cetera. As far as we know, she did not do that. Okay. And did you check with NIPSCO to determine when when the electrical service was split for the upstairs and the downstairs? I did not. Now, you indicated that ceiling height, uh, you just indicated throughout that there's varying uh, heights that you believe uh, do not comply with the seven foot. Right. Uh, did you determine the percentage in the rooms or where they yeah, are? In the living room, the main, the biggest room, um, more than half of the room was under seven feet. In, in, the, by, in the living room? In the living room area. And by by code, more than half, at least half of the room has to be seven feet. Did you determine what percentage of that living room was under seven feet? In my estimation, it was about three quarters under seven feet. Okay. Uh, in that room specifically. Okay, any other room that you believe that? Yeah, in the hallway, going towards the back of the house, it was also measured six two. That measured 62? Yes. Okay. Uh, according to the code, is it not true that the code allows an exception for that height uh, where there are beams, girders, or ductwork? Uh, off the top of my head, I would have to, I do not know what to look. And is it true that what you saw that was under seven feet was in fact ductwork? I don't know for sure. Are you talking about in the hallway? in the hallway or in the uh, the bedroom? Uh, I'm not, I wasn't talking about the bedroom. I believe that was seven feet. In the living room, about three quarters of the room was under seven feet. And was Some that? work would be normally, you know, a few feet going here or there. This was most of the room. Were you able to determine why that area was under seven feet? What, what was causing part of the room to be seven feet? Why was the other part jutting Something down? Something was enclosed, okay. perhaps plumbing, ductwork. Okay. Do I know for sure? No. So okay. I'm not opening that up. You indicated also that there was a, um, a fire resistant uh, citation? No fire separation, right. Okay. And how did you determine that there was no fire separation? Well, on the pictures here, you see there's no drywall, plaster and lath, nothing. It's just basically wood joists. Um. That's not the basement apartment, it's the basement. It's all part of it. The that, that isn't the habitable area. Is there any part of the habitable area that does not have fire resistance? Right here. This is the wall to the apartment with no fire resistance. Do you have any photographs of the finished interior habitable rooms? I do. There seems to be a wood paneling on the ceiling that I believe is in the kitchen area. That's not drywall or plaster and lath. Regardless, there was never any permits to convert this single family home. This is 
built in 1926 as a one-story frame home into a basement apartment at no time. Were you aware of the city of Hammond, the, the Public Works Department, coming out after my client had purchased this property in approximately 2000? Do you recall her informing you that the city had come out to inspect this in about 2000? She mentioned that Mr. Callahan had been to the building and inspected it, yes. And did she also tell you that Mr. Callahan had inspected it and found that the one window, which was for the fire escape, was not the code? Yeah, I believe what she told me and what she did without a permit was to add a, uh, a window well. And then did she... To one of the windows. And did she tell you that they came back, inspected that, and found that that complied with the code? I don't recall that. Did you look through your record to determine whether or not there's any record of that inspection in 2004? There is no record of that, nor is there a record of a permit for her adding that window well. Uh, Regardless, there's still glass block windows in the living space in the basement. It's on the code. Does the code require that there be one escape window that be no more than 44 inches high? From the floor to the sill. Correct. All the windows. Are you sure the code says that all the windows must be that, or there must be at least one window that must be no more than 44 inches for an escape? And I would specifically reference your citation on your notice, talks about Inter International Residential Code R3101.3, which you're citing that she's violating. You cited about an emergency escape and rescue required. Emergency escape and rescue openings are provided that they shall have a sill height of not more than 44 inches above the floor. Right. Does she have a window escape that is no more than 44 inches above the floor? She has one with the window well. That is in compliance with that provision? That window, to my knowledge, is compliant. But again, there were never any permits to add this apartment at any time. Well, the question is... It's zone R1U, which would allow for two units, and there is a rear dwelling as well. So she has three units on a, on a zone. Well, your citation doesn't reference that. It does not. I'm bringing that up to you right now. There's a second building on the property? Yeah, the garage was converted to a, a living unit. There were no permits for that either, but yes. we're not asking for the removal of that. That, that wasn't part of the citation that we prepared. Again, we're not asking for the removal of that. Okay. So how many, how many units are on it total? Three. Two in the main one and then the one in the back. Right. And you're just asking for the one? The basement apartment to be removed. Correct. Is there um, one way in and one way out or two ways or what is it? There is one way in the front and in the back it's cut off. <clears throat> when you go to the front, how do you get to the basement? Look at the front. Yeah, look at the front house here. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's the way in. And what's, how's the way out? That is, that is locked. That's like a laundry area, and that is locked. But it's open. So there's an exit it's through the laundry area? But I, the outside? it is locked. I don't think they can get out that way. They can. They have a key, and there is Where do they go through out? They go out the staircase to the front. That goes out to the outside, outside to the mountain. I, I can't remember specifically where the rear entrance goes to. They come out from the front entrance of the apartment building, and then they can also go up the stairs from the back way. So go they go out, open the door, there's a stairway. <coughs> yes, yes. And, and the fire is, the window was told to me to get built because that way in the bedroom they had a fire escape option. And that was in 04. I mean, and I've registered it for 13 years, every year, registering it through the city, all of my permits. Do you remember being there? No, but 10 years ago, no. <laughs> Diane from the fire department was the one that brought it to him, his attention, because she saw three mailboxes, so she came to me. That was back in 04. Um, and she said that she would have the building commissioner come by. He came by. He told me, as long as you can build a window and the, these dimensions. I gave the dimensions to my construction worker, 
And I'm pretty sure he had to have gotten a permit, but I don't. I asked him, and he does obviously does not keep a permit from a four for something he did from a different job. And so then the window got put in, and then they both came back again to reinspect, and they said, "Fine, you can keep your apartment." I mean, I wouldn't have been registering it for 13 years if I didn't think that it was complying with the city. If I may have her identify at least with respect to the window so that you may see this this measurement on the window that she was told to install in terms um, of the height. I have pictures because um, the violation says it has to be 44 inches from the floor. It's actually 25 and those are the measurements from the bottom of the floor to that window. I mean I could get out of that window. I hope you don't, <laughs> you don't go there. <laughs> I mean it's it's a my and all my tenants have always felt safe there. Um, there's never been any, you know, issues. Um, the apartment is very nice. We have pictures of the whole apartment. I repaint, I, I remodel, everything looks great. It looks fine. She's correct. She also told me at the inspection that it used to be a, a doctor's office or some sort of office. That was before I bought the house. That's correct. what I got from the okay. people that sold it to me. So obviously, originally it was not an apartment. It wasn't built that way. There was no permits to at an office, let alone an apartment. NIPSCO told me that in 1967, that's when they saw the distinction of it being a basement apartment or at least the splitting of the meters. And I mean, I had nothing to do with that when I came and bought the property in 2000 and I complied and I've had inspectors there and I've registered it, so. If I may also have her identify two other photographs with respect to the ceiling height. Um, this is the bedroom and when he was saying that the living room was more, it's it's not that's not the room. That the living room is ninety two percent of it is um, seven foot two and eight percent is six point four. I kitchen. had I had her measure the entire thing in terms of the height. But here's the photograph. So it the is not room is it is not the living room, but it is the bedroom. The bedroom has the variation with respect to the height of seven feet versus mm -hmm. the other part, which is covered which is covering ductwork. It's covering ductwork, so in order to make it cosmetically nice, I mean, I we you know there's drywall on it. But I mean, if you take the drywall out and just show the ductwork, probably more than seven feet of the room would more of the room would be seven feet. More than fifty percent of that room, or no, it's it was about forty-eight percent of the room is seven feet. Forty-eight percent of that six bedroom. Foot four, which with that exception of ductwork being that you can have it six foot four if there's ductwork. But it's only six foot two to the bottom of the ductwork. She's indicated she measured it. My head on it, and you probably would too. Ed. Oh no, it's six foot four. I measured it. She measured it at six. And four. I don't hit my head on it. I mean, I'm five nine. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm walking comfortably through the bedroom. And and the hallway ductwork, which the photograph really doesn't show it very well. The other height variation on the hallway that again is covering ductwork. And what's the height on the the hallway uh, is six foot eight inches. So it's not seven, it's six, eight. But that's the only part of the, of the apartment that's in question as far as seven feet. Everything else is above seven feet. Or I mean, is seven feet or above. If I may come in, um, council's right, there's a variation for uh, allowing um, the space, but that's only for six foot eight. So we're at 6266, we're still in the middle. Um, no, your exception says 644. 64 is the code. And R305.1.1 and the exception underneath there. And that's in the 2000. This finding states that, you know, there wasn't a permit pulled to, uh, no building permits were ever applied for or issued for adding a basement apartment as required by Hammond Municipal Code. Therefore, it is the opinion of the city of Hammond that a basement apartment was illegally installed. I mean, you're, you're citing ceiling heights and uh, basement windows, etc. I mean, if you're going to ask us to approve this order, I mean, I mean, I think, you know, the I's need to be dotted and T's crossed and that's why we added the, the codes as far as ceiling height and fire separation. <clears throat> it's simply more than just no permit. I don't see that in the findings. In 
The only thing I see in the finding is, is one item. No building permits were ever applied for. And, and the other thing I would, I would raise, too, is that the applicability of the code as to when it was adopted with respect to this apartment already having been installed, she's registering. I mean, we're, we've got no inspections, no one raising any issues, and she's had this apartment for, you know, 10, 14 years. Jim, this is what I'm going to recommend since Chris is not here, our city attorney is not here this morning, that we, you know, the bottom line, in, in my opinion, is if there were permits to convert it to an apartment, fine. If there were no permits, then there's no other issue that can justify uh, allowing it. I mean, you can go in a lot of these houses and add an apartment to current code, but if you do it without a permit, it's still not a legal, a legal use. But this city has the authority in terms of a grandfathering as to when that requirement for pulling that code She's had this. There, there's an acquiescence that I think is uh, at play here. It's not as if she's trying to violate the actual safety. If we're talking about the safety, does it comply with the safety? And quite frankly, I think except for, and, and again, I'm not, I haven't heard how we test as far as the fire, the, the fire rating between that. Uh, the fire rating, as you understand, there may be a question with respect to by the kitchen area. She's willing to change that in the kitchen area, of course, where there's a stove. Uh, she would be more than willing to make sure that we have an installation of, of fire rated uh, separation there in the kitchen area. But otherwise it would require tearing out everything. I, I've heard no evidence as far as how do you test for the fire rating? You just look at it or do you have to drill and see what is the thickness in terms of the fire rating? you mind explaining the grandfather clause to me that you just mentioned? Well, if someone has an apartment uh, and they have installed it back in, let's say, 1967, or let's say it happened in... 1967, in, with or without permits? Let, let, or it doesn't make any difference? It may make no difference if the... It, does, it, it doesn't make a difference. No, it may not make a difference if the city had not required that permit then. The city, since 1908, have required permits prior to that. In terms of this particular type of setting? Any type of project over okay. uh, a certain amount of money. I just don't so, see how. So, so the, uh, well, the other, the other problem is, is that you have also a doctrine called acquiescence. I mean, if we're talking about this property since 67, sitting there being used, the city's uh, having this thing registered with them, no inspection occur, it otherwise complies with all of the safety, absolutely, we have the doctrine of acquiescence. Mike, here's my recommendation. We need an attorney. <laughs> She's not here today. Because, uh, so I would like to stay to continue this for 30 days and let our attorney have a chance to look at it and see other, you know, whatever other findings we need to find out. And I think during that 30 days, you could talk to building and see if there's a solution to this. We, we, we would love to have a solution. You know, she's a taxpaying person. This is uh, good for the city. You know, th this will render this property quite unusable for her. I think the fact that you've been collecting level registration for, you know, 13 as years. You, as you all know, we have 10,000 rental properties. There's six inspectors. No way we can inspect these. My question, if it was inspected in 04, because Diane found it, saw it, and Jim went out there, there was never anything done to make her get rid of it in 04. In 04, we didn't have this venue. We didn't. We were going in front of Judge Harkin. Well, I agree, okay, but nothing so was done. Violations that were, well, I mean, in violation, in that case, it would be Sedora's violation. This is International Residential Code that's been violated. No, and that's why we're here in front of Board of Public Works. The but department is as a lot of safety issues. The window. fire right. separation right. and safety okay. issues. Okay. Back to the code 1926-27, um, reason the question of the balloon frame construction, the typical things that were in front of this board. Um, Kelly, you know, I mean, you know, there are legal arguments being made here, and we're not, you know, no attorney sitting here, so give it 30 days, November you can just, you know, you can have conversations with building, and we'll deal with it in 30 days. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Thank Most you very much. Second, Jim? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item B, hearing on property located at 7144 Grand Avenue. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Mr. 
Cook on 71, 44 grand. I thought we approved this last week. Yeah, you did. I, I don't know whether he was early or this was late, but yeah, they were going to take care of the issues from this. He's under. You have to approve it again? I'm sorry? Well, this, so this is a hearing, so I mean, is anyone here from 71, 44 grand? He's not here. <coughs> what did we decide last yeah, time? Yeah, I just remember hearing that. He's converting the duplex to a single family home. Yeah. Already started he agreed to do that, right? I think he was just a week early. All right, so noted. <clears throat> Item Q, correspondence received requesting rental registration hearing. Item R, quick claim B for Outlot A, Conkey Complex Addition to the City of Hammond. Yeah. Quick claim D. Um, <clears throat> I think we can we can tentatively approve it. There's some question that came up late yesterday from our city planner uh, about wanting to make a minor change in it. subject to Westland making a change if it's necessary. Okay, motion to continue. Second. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence received from Mr. Gary Green, Director of Public Works, requesting permission to place when children are present to the no turn on red sign at 171st Street and Kennedy Avenue during construction on Kennedy Avenue, a 30 minute parking sign at Balkan Products, 173rd Street and Jefferson Avenue and requesting turning the alley one way at 834 to 850 Chicago Street be referred to the traffic division at the Hammond Police Department. Motion to approve Gary's request. Second. Motion and second, all in favor. I have it. Item P. Correspondence received from Hammond High School requesting permission to hold a parade on October 10th, 2014 at 4 o'clock with enclosed route. I make a motion that we approve the parade. Second. And I'll refer it to PD or? Yeah. She'll send it. So motion and second. All in favor? Aye. I have it. Item U, correspondence received from Hammond Park and Recreation requesting J.F. Mahoney Drive become one way traveling east. Saturday, October 4, 2014, during the Latino Resource Fair. Motion to approve the traffic change. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Item V, correspondence received from Councilwoman at large, Janet Benez, requesting a handicapped parking only sign at 2040 Lake Avenue. Make a motion that be referred to Gary Diesel. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Correspondence received from the Apostolic House of Prayer First of God Ministries, Inc., requesting Blaine Avenue and Highland Street be blocked to the alley for an outreach service Sunday, October 5th, 2014. I'd like to make a motion that we approve their request. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item X. Correspondence received from Morton High School requesting permission to hold homecoming parade Friday, October 3rd, 2014, beginning at 4 p.m. with enclosed route. <coughs> Make a motion that we approve the route and the parade. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item Y. Select Plus Affiliate Registration Form with Microsoft submitted for approval. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item D, garage sale permits submitted for approval. The motion that we approve all of them. Motion. And a second. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Item six, uh, matters from any board members? I have two matters. One, I've got a request from AT&T uh, to do some work on Sheffield Avenue near Beamster Bore Trucking. I'd like to make a motion that we approve it. Motion. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. I'd also like to note that we did get the return receipt on the notice that was sent uh, concerning uh, the job section. Okay. <coughs> just need to note it that we got it back the certified letter return receipt noted <clears throat> address officer gabriel nava so acknowledged anything else board members any matter from other department heads or the representatives any new business any old business the meeting is now open to the public Anyone from the public wish to address the board? Item 11. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.